Hey everybody, it's John Reinhardt here with Reinhardt Group LLC. I feel like the dust has settled enough. It's been about three or four weeks since the incident, but yes, the ATF did come knocking on our door. They had a few questions for us and I'm so excited to finally tell you about it. I've been holding this in and now I get to finally tell you. So let's hop right into it. Mama, I'm a criminal. Mama, I'm a criminal. So first and foremost, what is the ATF? The ATF is the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives. Technically, the acronym should be B-A-T-F-E, but whatever, it's their government corporation. They can keep their acronym however they want. But there's only about one letter that's associated with my brother and I, and that would be the firearms. I'm actively trying to get a gun safety device patented, and he is an antique gun collector. So I knew that was probably what they were, had a few questions for us for. This is how it went. So the date is Friday, August 4th, 2023, exactly a month ago ago from today's date, my brother, Mike Reinhardt, is at work and he gets a phone call from a random phone number. And I mean, who answers random phone numbers nowadays? The amount of telemarketers that are out there. So he just lets it ring and, you know, go to voicemail. They don't leave a voicemail, but they call him back immediately. And so in Mikey's mind, he's like, I better answer this. And he picks it up. And yes, it's an ATF agent on the phone as who he identifies as. He wants to talk to Mikey face to face. Does not give Mikey a whole lot of information over the phone. Mike could have probably asked a little bit more about what that officer wanted, but he does really well, actually. He says, I'm an, I'm at work right now. I'm an hour away from you. I have to go talk to my boss. I'll let you know here. I'll call you back. ATF agent agrees. He says, that's fine. They each hang up the phone and my brother calls me and says, hey, this ATF agent wants to meet up, wants to talk. What do you think? And originally I was kind of frustrated with my brother God damn! because I'm just like, why didn't you get more information from him? Like, what did he want? God you know, after it was all said and done, I do genuinely believe this guy probably was not going to give up any information. He didn't have to give up information. His job was solely to find my brother and get what he needed from him. And this is just my personal opinion. You can tear me to shreds in the comments section if you want to. But I believe that if the ATF is reaching out to you and you have not reached out to them and are awaiting a response, them reaching out to you is not going to be beneficial to you at all. There is no positive manner that the ATF is going to reach out to you if you're not waiting for a response. They're not calling to see how your day is going to wish you a happy birthday. They have a grievance and it's with you. So while all of this is going on, the ATF agents aren't at my brother's house. They're at my parents' house. And so here my mom has a ring doorbell, sees these two plainclothes people. You can kind of tell they have badges once you see them get closer to the door. But before that, I mean, they just pull up in a in an unmarked Mercury Mountaineer. It's red. I mean, it's probably like an $8,000, you know, older vehicle, probably like 140,000 miles on it. And my mom, I'm so happy she did this. She just didn't even think twice. She just called the cops, said, hey, someone's trying to get in into my house. And so the ATF agents, they leave, they call Mikey, we're trying to find Mikey where he's at. And then the cop shows up to the house and he's trying to figure out what's going on there too. So now we have ATF agents, we got the police involved. My mom's trying to figure out what's going on. And so I finally called her and filled her in. My brother Mike goes and talks to his boss, gets approval to leave and go deal with the situation at home, which the ATF is at my house. It's an incredible excuse if you ever wanna leave work early, there's that. But my brother calls the ATF agent back, tells him the correct address to be at. They set the day and time for all August 4th at 1 p.m. at my brother's house. Everything's set, everything's good to go, we can all meet. And as smooth and as brightful and as cheery as everything is going, I still, in the back of my head, I'm still very nervous. If the ATF shows up with a search warrant and they wanna search your home, they can. If the ATF shows up with an arrest warrant and they want to arrest you for something that they that they think that you did, they arrest you. I mean, it's, like I said, it, it's usually not a good thing when the ATF wants to talk to you, but 1 p.m.'s rolling around, I'm there, my brother's there, we're watching out the window and we're waiting. I would say at this point in time, I'm, I'm in somewhat of like a brooding mood. I am, I'm just frustrated by the entire thing. Uh, you know, there was a lot I didn't know at that point in time, but I just didn't understand. My brother is really kind of the definition of like a hard working American. He works a 40 hour week job as an engineer. He drives an hour to and from work. So, you know, 50 to 60 hours there. And then on top of that, he helps my parents landscaping and he mows until, you know, it's dark out. He has to put lights on his mower because he mows because it's that late. And I'm just like, what in tarnation could a government agency want with somebody that he plays by the rules. He's a very straight shooter. What do they need with this guy? And that's one of the reasons I was, I was pretty frustrated to be honest. And But the agents finally show up about 10 minutes late. I'm gonna let Mikey do the majority of the talking here. They're the, he's the guy they wanna talk to. I am looking as much like a lawyer as I can with my tie. I look, I look pretty professional and we walk out there. I sit on the stoop. I got my video camera on just to get as much audio as I can. The guys, they are, they're nice. They're walking up, they're, they're buddy buddy in there. They're trying to build rapport. Hey, you know what I mean? They were a little bit over the top but I could tell this is their job. They're trying to lower our defenses here and kind of get everybody on some even playing field. How are you? How you doing, officer? Good. Mike? Yes, sir. How's it going, man? Not too bad. How about yourself? 
Thanks for meeting us again. I really appreciate it. Hey, no problem. After we get all the little pleasantries over with, my name's Mike. Who is that? That's my brother. Yada, yada, yada. They hop right into it. They kind of start interrogating my brother on two pistols that he recently bought. And when I say recently, it was probably about five weeks ago. He purchased two pistols from a gun store called Jake Way. Jake Ways is an incredible gun store. We do a lot of business with them. I have nothing bad to say about them whatsoever. But my brother, he buys, uh, it's an older Luger for about $1,000. Whoever had the gun consignment or even someone down the line, you just, we don't know. We'll never know. It is what it is. But that gun was stolen. And when my brother bought two pistols, it triggered a deeper background check that flagged this gun is stolen. And that is exactly why the ATF was trying to find my brother. They're trying to get this Luger back. Like I said, my brother Mike, he's a very honest man. He's got a lot of integrity. He just told the ATF agents, absolutely, I still have that Luger. It's down at my parents' house. Can we run down there real quick and grab it? Everybody was in complete agreement. So we ran down there, got the Luger, handed it off. They gave us a receipt for the gun and the magazine. Just a note there, if you're thinking about holding on to the magazine because it's worth some money and they're looking for that gun, give them both. Just give them both. Wash your hands of it. What we did, we just took that receipt and we took it up to Jake Ways and Jake Ways gave us a full return on everything. They're an innocent bystander in all of this. I really do genuinely believe. I love that gun store. It's one of the best gun stores that we have in this area. So nothing against them whatsoever, but it all shook out uh, honestly pretty well. Everybody everybody was happy. The guy got his gun back. Jake Ways gave us our money back. We're on the hunt for another Luger and I, I'm happy with how things shook out. But I promise you, ATF interactions usually never go that smooth. They're actually pretty abrasive interactions. Even the ATF agent said, thank you. Thank you guys for making this easy. Thank you guys for doing the right thing. We felt good about doing the right thing but it could have gone a lot worse. It could have been something completely different. We now know that. And the next video that I'm gonna be doing is exactly how to deal with the ATF if they get a hold of you. I've got it pretty much figured out on how you should deal with the ATF if they come to find you, if they call you, whatever means of contact. Please hit that subscribe button so you don't miss that video. It's gonna be so important. This is John Reinhardt here with Reinhardt Group LLC. I'll see you next time and stay out of the way of the ATF.